The Central Board of Direct Taxes has issued guidelines with respect to the new Section 194S. But what is this section? It was inserted in the Income Tax Act through Finance Act 2022. It mandates deduction of 1% TDS on transfer of crypto and other virtual digital assets. Now, when will it come into effect? This will come into effect from the 1st of July 2022. What all does it say? Let's cover up who will cut the TDS part first. So in a peer-to-peer, -peer, that is direct buyer-to-seller transaction, the buyer, that is a person paying the consideration, is required to deduct tax under this section of the Act. But if this transaction is between an exchange and buyer, which probably will be your and my interaction, so a lot of us exchange all of this on an exchange, so in that case, buyer would be crediting or making payment to the exchange directly or to a broker. Now the consideration for transfer of VDA shall be on gross basis after including GST commission or it should be on net basis. So that's also another question and answer to that is it will be on the net consideration after excluding GST or charges levied by the deductor for rendering service. In the end, how will TDS apply in case of transfer of crypto for another crypto? In this case, both of the parties are buyers as well as sellers. So both will have to pay the tax and show evidence for the exchange of the virtual digital assets. This was my explainer. And now we have our guest as well, who will also answer some of the sub questions of these questions and also some other queries that I also had. She also helped me decode this entire circular as well. We have with us Priti Khurana, Director of Advocacy and Regulation Clear. A very warm welcome. Now, my first question has to be about this, uh, you know, the difference that we are seeing, uh, which is exchange between two different crypto. You know, th there's first a normal exchange and then there is exchange between different crypto. You, you have one crypto to trade with between another crypto so th there are a few details that that you wanted to add go ahead with that sure uh, yeah i think that has been a very important aspect that has been clarified uh, in this guidelines and what the department is saying that if you're exchanging one vda for another there are actually two legs of the transaction so you have two buyers and two sellers yeah. and therefore tds deduction will take place from both the ends of the sell transaction Hmm. So let's say if you're exchanging currency X for currency Y, uh, in such a situation, the ex if uh, you know this transaction has been facilitated through an exchange, then uh, the exchange will deduct 1% TDS in kind from X and 1% of Y. Hmm. And whenever they make that deduction, immediately they will place an order, they'll execute an order to convert that 1% of X and 1% of Y into what they are now calling is primary VDA. Mm -hmm. So the TDS also takes place in kind and the net balance. So let's say if you've sold uh, X, then you will receive, you know, whatever is the balance after deduction of 1% mm. uh, of X. And so the exchange will go ahead and convert these 1% X and 1% Y into what they are calling primary VDAs, which are which have been defined in the guidelines as uh, uh, you have Ethereum, you have Bitcoin, USDT, and USDC. So mm. these four have been mentioned as uh, primary, primary VDAs simply right. because it's uh, easily convertible to INR. Now, when that happens, uh, the exchange will at the end of the day so at midnight the exchange has to go and liquidate uh, you know the value of these primary vdas into inr and that's the value they will go and deposit right so essentially just to over you know sort of try to simplify it that deduction happens in kind and if it is a non-primary vda then it has to be immediately converted by the exchange into primary vda and at the end of the day at midnight the exchange will go and sell those primary VDAs, whatever TDS they've collected in those primary VDAs, and then realize the INR value, which they will go in for the deposit. Okay, so this was a very specific situation here. Now, uh, you know, there, there must be several consumers here who are transacting uh, with, I mean, who are doing these crypto transactions, and they probably don't get taxation, TDS, and all of that. What, what does really change for them? Sure. Right. I think uh, it's very, very relevant as a person who is investing in cryptocurrencies to fully understand what changes for you. So firstly, of course, we know there's a 30% tax, but effectively what you're 
now going to see is uh, the exchange may actually try to renew the customer agreements they had because the guidelines very clearly specify that the exchange needs to sort of get into an agreement that they are making the TDS deduction on your behalf and all of that. Secondly, you will see that in your Form 26AS, whatever TDS has been deducted, you will start to see it uh, show up in your Form 26AS. That's very, very relevant. The other very important aspect that uh, consumers or investors need to understand is that uh, the thresholds that have been defined for applicability of TDS, uh, 50,000 and 10,000 in different scenarios, the you know the when you're testing for that threshold you have to include transactions which have been done from 1st april 2022 so even though the tds is going to get uh, uh, implemented from 1st july right. the applicability of tds happens if you you know from 1st april so in the sense mm. when you're testing for the threshold you have to include the values effective 1st april 2022 and Ms. Kurana, then there's this um, another point that we were also discussing before the show, which is a threshold of 50,000 rupees and 10,000 rupees. And I got a bit confused there. And I know you tried to decode it there, but if you can do that for our consumers as well, for our customers here uh, who, are, who are general, uh, you know, consumers. Sure, I'll try to simplify it. So for most of us, uh, that limit is 10,000 rupees on an aggregate basis in a financial year. Right. For most of us, that limit is 10,000 rupees uh, in the entire financial year. If you exceed that value uh, of consideration, then the TDS kicks in. But if you are someone who's either running a business or doing a profession, for you, the limit is 50,000. And it does not apply to all pro uh, businesses and professions. Even within those, there are limits. So there's one crore threshold for a business and 50 lakhs uh, receipts for a profession. Now, what that means is if you are a business with turnover less than a crore in the entire financial year, preceding the year for which we are deducting TDS. So you have to look at the turnover in the preceding year. If it is less than a crore, then your limit stays 10,000. Right. Oh, so, so, so this 50,000 and 10,000 is the aggregate value of the transactions of VDA that, that one is doing. Correct. It's, it's the consideration. Mm. It's actually the value of consideration that you're going to receive. Got it, got it. And also, I think we would like to reiterate that, you know, all of this, the entire circular actually applies to only the residents of the country, right? Right. So the TDS kicks in if you're making a payment to someone who's resident in it, mm -hmm. right? So that's when this particular section will kick in. Sure. Thank you so very much. It was lovely having you. And here we decode such complex things while sipping a coffee because this is called Coffee and Crypto.